Do you know what's the most important part when creating a product, be it digital or physical? You might be thinking that is the material that you use, or how it feels, or how it looks. And although those are really important, they are being trumped by one single thing, which is research. Because you see, if you create a product that feels good, does the same thing, you can end up with something like this. And this, although does the exact same job as this one, they have the same audio quality, nobody uses it because it's crap. And that's because people who did that or who created that fail to do one thing, do the research. That's why in this video, I'm gonna show you a technique that will help you avoid creating bad user experiences for your digital product. So I've been a product designer for more than 13 years now. And I can tell you from the bottom of my heart that the main reason businesses and entrepreneurs fail is because they create products that nobody uses and that nobody wants, or they create features that nobody actually asked for. And that's because they fail to do this research phase. They fail to ask questions about how people interact with their products or how they're using their products or why they're using their products in the first place. What is the problem that their products is solving? You see, before building anything, the best thing you can do is to start asking questions. Let's take this scenario. Let's say that I'm gonna give you now $10 million to open a restaurant in Prague. But the condition is you cannot go there, you cannot walk the streets, you cannot ask people what they prefer eating or what they like eating. You cannot do any type of research. Would you invest that money without knowing anything? Just be like, okay, I have an idea and I'm just gonna put the money in? I highly doubt it. You see, your chance of failing are quite high because if you don't know your target audience, you don't know what they're willing to pay for. And you might be thinking, okay, I'm gonna open a pizza place or a burger joint. But the problem is, some people don't like that. Or in the area you're in, you might have so much competition that you're gonna inevitably fail. For example, if you try to open a burger place in Italy or France, most likely you're gonna fail because they have different preferences. They have different ways of eating and every single culture and every single person is different. So that's why you have to know your target audience before you do anything. And these examples can translate to digital products. I mean, I cannot tell you the amount of times I had people telling me, it's like, oh, you know what to do. Just build a digital product. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it will work because I don't know your target audience. I don't know how to shape that product or how to optimize it. It's like I'm flying blind. And if you're doing this for a startup, then yes, you're not gonna have data to create the perfect product. But even then, you can do a bit of research just to kind of like get a feel or on where you should start. And if you missed the video where I explain how I use ChatGPT to create products, then I highly recommend you to check it out. It's gonna be in the description and somewhere over here. And yeah, I use that to do the initial research so I know how to build the product. And here is where the double diamond approach comes into play. The structure is extremely simple. The first stage is the discovery phase. And here is where you should gather as much information as you can about your user. You need to learn everything that you can about them. And you can do that by using Google Analytics, surveys, doing interviews, basically anything you can lay your hands on just to gather that data. Like here is the stage where you just go broad and you try to capture as much data as you can about your users. Now the next stage is the problem definition. And here is where you take all that data that you gathered and you try to narrow it down into specific problem statements. And the key thing here is that they need to be very specific in the sense that they cannot be broad. Your problem statements should sound something like, I don't know, Users are very frustrated because they cannot see the total amount they need to pay before checking out from an e-commerce website, let's say. And because of that, they are anxious to click the pay now button and they just drop off the website. Like that's how specific it needs to be. Now, the beautiful thing about this double diamond approach is that if, for example, you don't have the information necessary to define those problems clearly, then you can go back to the discovery phase and then you can start gathering more data 
for that specific problem that you're trying to fix. And once those problem statements are clearly defined, you can move on to the next phase, which is the development and the test phase. And here is where you start building that UI because you know the problem that the, your user has or the problem that you're trying to solve. And now you're starting to create those user interfaces so you can test them out. So in this phase, if you have the possibility, I will highly recommend you to create some designs and then afterwards go and test them with the users just to make sure that you're going into the right direction. But if you can't, then just try to create as many designs as you can just to figure out what the optimal solution will be. And here is basically you start broad again with the designs, just go wild and then you try to narrow it down to the most likely possibility or the most efficient design let's say. Then you go to the last state which is called the delivery and here is where everything that you did previously condenses into one solution. So here all that data that you gather in the discovery phase, everything, the problem definitions, the designs that you created, now you're narrowing it down to one option or two options let's say but you're narrowing it down and here is where you decide what to implement here is the part where you can go with the designs to the stakeholders or the developers or if you're the entrepreneur here is where you decide the thing that you're going to implement and the beautiful part of this system is that once you're done you have two options either you go back to the problem definition or you go back to the discovery phase depending if you have problems to fix still or if not then you go back to the discovery phase to see okay what can I optimize or what can I do better for my product and the thing is this can go on and on and on and it should go on and on as long as the product is live and as long as you have users because the product is not a thing that you can actually create and deliver it's something that it's a living and breathing thing it shapes and it evolves as you move along and that's the beauty of knowing about this system if you have this system in your mind i can promise you that you will never create a bad digital product you will always evolve and your products will get better and better as you progress and if you keep this in mind all the time i promise you you are gonna become a better product designer so if you enjoyed this video and if you're curious to see how I personally use AI like ChatGPT to do research, then I highly recommend you to check this video out. And uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. But I highly recommend you to check it out. Just one click. Come on. It's just a click. What's a click for you? You have so many clicks. Just, just one. Just clickety-clack. Click one. Come on. So many, so many clicks you have. Yes. Just, just click it.